Alrighty gang, this is The Outside. Welcome back to another video. Today we're fly fishing. Fishing, fly fishing, not fishing. I think that's something to do with atomic power and I've got no idea about any of that stuff. So let's stick to the fly fishing, fishing. So as you can tell we're on the road, hopefully the audio quality is not too poor. When you drive a tractor, you kind of get a lot of background noise. I've definitely suggested in previous videos that there's a couple of other outdoor pastimes that I have that I'm probably going to shoot from time to time, and this is one of them. It's a nice little add-on to trail running, traveling, hiking, those sort of things. Probably one of the coolest things about fly fishing is that it really takes you to some magical places uh, all around the world. And using fly fishing as an excuse to travel really opens up your eyes to some awesome natural environments. Background. I've been fly fishing since I was a little kid, I guess. It's something I've kind of enjoyed. I enjoy the challenge of it. It's not the kind of thing you can pick up straight away and be awesome at it. So it's a bit like, uh, like surfing or those sort of things. You can't just be an instant expert. To be honest, you're never a full expert. You're always learning. And like most things, the day you think you know it all, that's probably the time to give it away. One of the massive pluses of my fly fishing has been that I've met so many cool people around the place through fly fishing. So I guess as a 101 for people who might watch my running videos and aren't really into fly fishing, the difference between fly fishing and other forms of fishing is that the flies are basically weightless. So the line itself is weighted. This is a bit of a basic 101, so those who are into fly fishing probably don't need to hear all this, but a rhythmic action by really long flippy rods and working that line in air is what extends the line out onto the water, rather than putting a lure or a weight or something and some bait on the end of a line and throwing it in, providing the weight to pull the line out. That's the main difference. I'm by no means one of those people who only fishes with a, with a fly. It's, uh, some people are really purist that way. If I want to catch fish using other methods, I'll do that too. But it's great fun, really enjoyable when you catch fish on flies, you've tied yourself and things like that. So our destination today is Lake Wenderee. Now that's in the regional Victorian city of Ballarat. And the groovy part about it is it sits right in the middle of town. So like other lakes might be in more remote areas, this thing's right in town. So if at any time you want to wander over to a coffee shop and grab a coffee, you can. It's pretty civilized. I like it, I guess, because I know it. It's easy for me to fish, and I generally catch fish there. So that's got to be a positive. It's a beautiful day. It's very, very cold. And Ballarat sits about somewhere between six and 800 metres above sea level. So it's always colder than everywhere else in the winter. But the sun's out, the wind's low. Hopefully we'll get some really good footage and we'll catch some fish.
So doing a fair amount of searching here, dragging these wet flies, but uh, there's not a lot doing. But we'll be patient and we'll persevere. Fishing it very early in winter. That's probably slightly different too. Usually not this early, or this late, as you might call it. Okay, we've got to follow. Nice little trout too. Yes, now we're in. Okay, it took a little while, but we finally got a fish. Oh no, I dropped him. Damn it. But that was lovely tape because he was playing on the surface. And me mucking around with cameras, it's cost me a fish. But he was playing on the surface, we ran straight through him and boom. Small fish. But a fish nonetheless. But at least we've connected. So what does that tell us? It tells us flies are okay. Retrieve's probably okay. Let's check those flies. Yeah, I've just learned a valuable lesson about filming while fishing. Just do the fishing and don't worry about the filming. Okay, we made a connection. We made a friend. My reverse stance fishing, gotta love it. question is what fly did it eat oh, i'm going to say it ate the top dropper not the point fly but i couldn't really tell because of i was a well past it so i could have possibly eaten the point fly but given it was up in the water the top dropper would have been higher in the water column so i get the feeling i might have eaten that that little blingy windery damsel i'm running there Anyway, hopefully he's got some mates through here. But uh, we've just done a bit of a quick fly change too, just to just subtle changes, not going crazy just yet. But uh, just felt like there wasn't enough, wasn't enough bulk in the uh, my point fly. Point fly being the one that's furthest away from me on the end. So you call that one the point one. And then the one that's part way up the leader. It's called the uh, the dropper. Uh, in some places you can use three flies. In Victoria you're only allowed to use two. So like places like Tasmania you could have three and you'd, you'd call one the point, the one the top dropper. And I guess the other one you'd call the middle dropper I suppose. The flies I'm using have little beads on the head of different sizes so um, and that's all about making them a little bit heavy so they do sink through the water column a little bit 
but also about making them a bit pretty. So as you can see with that one there, I don't know whether you can make that out, but uh, that there is my uh, that's my dropper fly. It's got a groovy little uh, orange bead on the head. Generally, the uh, the dropper fly, it's got a bit more bling about it than the point fly. Keep the point fly kind of natural. Yeah. And you uh, you jazz up your dropper flies. And generally, they're a touch smaller. Now, I am by no means any any world fly fishing champion, but um, I can catch a few fish here and there, and I've certainly got a lot of advice and a lot of coaching over the years from from those who are pretty good in the game. So everything I'm everything I'm talking at you, I'm regurgitating from people who are much better at it than me. There's no need to drop any names, they know who they are and they know how appreciative I am of of all the information and experience and knowledge they've given me over the years. Very long leader I'm using too, so I'll go through my gear after, but my leader structure is basically about 10 feet between the flies, and then probably that again between the, the end of the fly line, which is this, this really thick line. Obviously, you can't tie a hook directly to that. No fish would eat that. So, yeah, about uh, a litre of fluorocarbon material, which is fine and very difficult for fish to see, but very strong. So, yeah, 10 foot to that from the fly line to the first fly or the dropper fly. And then probably around about another 10 foot, maybe a touch more to the next fly. And I think it is about 10 foot. I'll vary depending on where I'm fishing and how. It'd be anywhere from 6 to 10 foot between the flies, but always at least 10 foot to the fly line, often longer, depending on how clear the water is or how stealthy I guess I want to be. This is very clear today. Actually looks really cool in there. I'm going to focus a bit more on my retrieve now. I'm getting a little bit lazy, expecting it just to happen. And that's not how it works. Still got to work for it. See, even then, I wasn't getting in contact with my fly quick enough. Too busy fluffing around with line. You want to be constantly in contact with your fly. Learned that from... A very good friend of mine, he knows who he is. Attention to detail is the key. Mine isn't there all the time, but it's there enough to catch fish occasionally. Okay, yes, all right. That's what we're talking about. Late in the day, a bit dull. Let's see what we've got. Might have even taken the top dropper, has he? No, no, point fly, okay. Let's get him aboard. Not a bad fish. actually worked out to be pretty good because that has sort of hit pretty much exactly how I wanted it to and where I expected to find fish so that's a pretty good outcome not too foul okay. barbless hook should fall straight out without any trouble although he's uh, also, she has eaten it pretty well. Look at that. Beautiful silvery colour. Winter fish. Little winter reef fish. Not too foul. Beautiful. Now, a lot of people who fly fish for trout are sort of staunch advocates of catch and release, which is totally cool. 
means there's plenty of fish there for forever particularly the waters they stock so not too many coming out but i will unashamedly say that there is nothing better than taking a fish here or there uh, from lakes like this where the water is so clean the, f the fish is just beautiful i think like a bit of a field of crispy skin trout from a lake like this it's it's lovely to eat so probably got people who say hey you shouldn't do that we should be practicing catch and release on our trout fishery to maintain it although you know they're not native fish um they are stocked for people to take but um in saying that i'm not into taking a lot of fish it's, i do enjoy the pastime but um i say why not why not take a fresh fish when you can Let's do a little bit of roly poly. Yes, not a huge fish, but finally, reward for targeting those midge feeding fish. Could be, let's have a look. Hey, a little smaller fish, but oh, it's a brown trout nonetheless. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Look at that, what a ripper. Absolute ripping fish. Get the point fly again, so it's been pretty popular on the fish front today. Look at that. Beautiful little fellow. What an absolute ripper. So that's a wrap from a cold winter's day on Lake Wendouree. Early winter, a couple of fish, can't complain too much. Things were pretty quiet, but we managed to dredge a couple up. For those interested in the flies I was using, they're basically woolly bugger style patterns. So on my point fly, I pretty much had this kind of thing. See if you can see that one there. Got a little beat on the head. Obviously looks a bit different when he's underwater. And which I don't think got eaten is a similar version. So Wendery Damsel, and it actually has an orange beet head, but slightly smaller. Like I sort of suggested earlier, fishing those are somewhere between six to 10 feet apart with about 10 feet of litre straight fluorocarbon from the end of my fly line. Intermediate fly line, getting down to the bottom of the weed bed. Most of the areas I fished, there was about a metre above the weed. Yeah, not a bad day. Weather was fairly kind to me. A little bit more breeze would be nice. Get me moving a little bit, but uh, I can't complain. Hopefully next time I fish the lake, a couple of large fish. That'd be kind of nice. I know there's some big ones getting around and I really like fishing that springtime or even August. So late winter, early spring, I really enjoy it up here, particularly pulling wet flies like this. Just a little bit of rowing traffic going on. Got the rowing coach yelling stuff into the megaphone. It's kind of funny. Hopefully you've enjoyed the ride today. It's been a pretty cool day to be out. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like what you're seeing and also subscribe to the channel. Really helps me build it as I sort of start to film more and more things, keep this shooting up and keep posting more good quality content to the channel. So until I get out there again, keep fishing, stay happy and I'll see you on the outside.